Good morning. Welcome to Wombledon. I've come dressed as a farmer today and I'm in a field with cows. But more importantly, I'm in one of my favourite places in the whole wide world in Northamptonshire. And it is the hill fort, Borough Hill um, in Daventry. And it's an amazing place. Um, the history here goes back all the way to the Stone Age, um, through the Bronze Age, through the Iron Age, Roman occupation. Um, what we're going to do is we'll wander up here and we'll have a look shortly at the masts that are here from the BBC. Uh, the BBC came up here in 1925 and put these um, masts up here and started, edu as they put it in their, um, in their own blurb at the time, educating and entertaining the masses. So obviously the BBC took it upon themselves to educate the stupid British people um, from their, from their um, hilltop fortress. And it's interesting to me that this, that's the same kind of thing that's gone all the way back. You know, the, the Stone Age people were up here because obviously you can probably see for miles around, you can see off into the distance in every direction. Uh, the same for the Bronze Age people, and then the same for the Stone Age people, and the Roman villa that was up here as well. Um, that obviously commanded a view across all of these valleys around here. I mean, you can see to Coventry, you can see, see to Rugby, you can see halfway down to Banbury down there, you can see into Northampton over there. It wasn't quite so sunny. You'd probably see the um, Northampton Lighthouse, which is the lift tower, which hopefully me and Purple, uh, sorry, I've not introduced him yet, have I? Oh, which hopefully me and Purple at some point will be going... Um, going looking at in the, in the in the not too distant future uh, so you can see for miles and miles and miles around here so that's why these hill forts are such an amazing thing um, but what we're going to do is um, we're going to have a wander around um, I'm not sure we're supposed to be in this bit um, we're with the cows though so and I look like a farmer so we should be all right watch us get charged now but then um, let me turn the camera around here because are you up if you look here at this big concrete block, oh, yeah. this is where they used to Anchor support. Down, yeah. yeah, they used to support the, um, the, 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 the 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 aerials. If you look at the one that's still standing now, now this has been um, every, they were all decommissioned in about 1993, I believe. But this last one remains, um, and that's is for the BBC digital signal. Um, but yeah, so there were lots and lots of these. Um, these um, aerials up here, and so they had all these great big concrete uh, bollards. This is tiny compared to some of them that we'll see as we go around. Hello, good morning. Hello, little ladies. They're only youngsters, aren't they? And you can see just over here another part of what would there would have been an aerial in the centre because you can see the third one there, one, two, and the one we've just looked at. So somewhere in the middle here, there would have been an aerial that obviously towered up into the sky. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to get out, out of the cow field and we're going to go over towards the, um, the hill fort itself. So we're actually walking towards the, um, the big aerial now. Now, I, th I, might be, I, I might have my dates wrong. I'm not actually, I've read, I've read about this before, but I've not done any research today. I think that the, area, the original aerial that, was, that were put up here was in 1925. And the BBC, like I said earlier, wanted to... Um, um, educate and entertain the world and so you know from here they would signal halfway across the world with um, long wave radio and um, as, as the British Empire began to collapse in between the wars and then obviously after the Second World War this was the how they maintained their soft power um, you know the um, even now you know Britain's just a a little island on the edge of Europe and it's you know it's no longer part of Europe you know um, it is but you know we're all European but no longer part of the European Union um, but yet we still manage to maintain the status as the sixth biggest economy on the planet and you think to yourself well that's a bit weird we've we've mined all the ironstone out which is obviously something me and purple are very interested in as well uh, we've got rid of all the tin mines we don't produce anything anymore, we don't produce cars or anything, or if we do, they're being produced by companies like Nissan and uh, Honda, Toyota, and obviously, so then all the money's going off elsewhere. So the, um, the expression of soft power by the BBC from places like this, let me turn the thing round. I mean, you look at the size of that. What we'll do in a minute is we'll get the drones up, or get a drone up, and we'll show you some of the um, some of the amazing, it gives you an idea how tall it is. Just over here, we're gonna to have to have a little clamber over this fence, but you'll start to see the first parts of the, um, the hill fort here. So what they did 
we'll they dig defensive ditches. As we go down, I'll show you a little bit closer. But we're going to have a look at the um, the aerial first. Look at that. You just look at the size of these um, shackles and hardware down here that's um, supporting these cables. It's difficult. Yeah, it won't pick it up on the camera. It does. It's even difficult to kind of gauge it by eye. But see that shackle there? He's 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 absolutely massive. There's, there you go. This shackle just here must be. What is it? It's probably a foot long. And then that bottle screw there is just um, what, a metre and a half long. Amazing. And it holds this up on top of this windy hill. It's a beautiful day today, but obviously when it gets windy, that is going to get a lot of um, tension on it. And that's what these wires are doing, is holding it. So there's a big concrete block under there. I don't know if you can see it particularly well. But as we go round, you'll see other ones anyway. And, um, and as you can see, I'm just going to go up this little hill here. And this hill is actually part of the hill, is, is the hill fort. This is, you can see the, the hill rises and then it drops again. And so this were the defences of, of the hill fort. And it's a massive hill fort as well. It's one of the largest multi valley hill forts in the UK. Um, I think it stretches something like 1.5 miles in that direction. And it's about three quarters of a mile wide. So it's, it's absolutely massive. And, and uh, hopefully if the golf course isn't too busy. We'll show you the, another part of it because there are actually two hill forts here, one on top of the other. But like I say, we're going to have a look at the, have a look at this and get the drone up and just uh, show you that from, from a bit of a distance. So now, I mean, hopefully you've seen the drone footage of the tower. And the tower is only just here. Hopefully you can still see it. Is it there? I can't see it myself on the little tiny screen. But now I'm actually in what was a... They kind of think it was the old road, roadway that brought them in. But this is actually the hill fort um, defences itself. You can see here how high the ground is here. And obviously how high it is on that side. Now it's known as a multi valley hill fort, which means that it had more than one of these ditches. If I turn the camera around, you'll see it a lot clearer. And you can see the ditch here and here. And um, apparently there were more, more than one of these, which, which is the multi valley part of it. And, um, but they've been, the, the land has been used agriculturally since, since, you know, way back when the Romans came through and all that kind of thing. And it's kind of, um, it's been ploughed out and it's disappeared, but this is probably the clearest part, certainly of this end of the of the um, the hill fort. And you really get an idea. This would have been so much deeper if you've seen the video on the hill fort at Northampton, which I'll link in the description, or you'll see a little card or something up there. Um, you'll see how much deeper the um, these defences were, and these people were the same people as well. We, these were the Coriel Torvi people and the Court of Alorni people um, that were living in in this area before the Romans turned up. So they were the they were the names given by the Romans to the people that lived here. So there were different tribes. I've just been shouted out, give me a second. But you can see, there you go, you can see how much higher it is up there now. It's beginning to, um, but I'm just gonna go this way and look at the views over here. So you can see the views that it commands are absolutely stunning. And we're not even on the top of the actual fort here. The, the hill fort would have had these Iron Age people on. Obviously, there were Bronze Age people here before, but they didn't build these hill forts. It was an Iron Age uh, defence system, uh, community system. And obviously, it took a lot of work. And um, so these people came together and, and they lived in relative peace for about 500 years um, before the Romans turned up. And then when the Romans turned up, obviously, the Romans came here, well, for power, but also for uh, the ironstone that's that's all around Northamptonshire and obviously further afield we've got things like tin and things like that um, and it's, it's like I said earlier it's very interesting to me that the power that something this tall and high above the surrounding land projects is 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 exactly the same as what that projects it's about power it's about being on top and looking down on other people and and you know being better um, he's drawn my attention to a notice board over here so we're going to have a look at that 
So here we are at this notice board. And like I said, this is, these are the people that did all the work here. This is MOLA, the Museum of London Archaeology, and CLASP, which is Community Landscape Archaeological Archaeology Archaeology Survey Project. You'd think I'd know being married to an archaeologist. And uh, this Borough Hill, Daventry calling the world. So when they first set up this, um, this, this aerial up here, that was the sign that they used. Daventry calling the world. And obviously there's one of those things if you're that, that way inclined. So it says here, you are currently standing in the southeast corner of the earlier of the two hill forts on Borough Hill. Behind you, to your left, you can see the surviving earthworks of the two banks and ditches that formed the earliest fortifications here during the Iron Age. They actually mean in front of us to the right. Right. But there you go. Um, uh, during this period, a series of banks and ditches enclosed almost the entire crown of the hill, an area of some 54 hectares, like I say, making it one of the largest hill forts in the United Kingdom. The hill had already been the focus of activity prior to the hill fort being occupied. Flint, tools and metalwork found on the hilltop dated from the Bronze Age. Um, and then the dramatic elevation also made the hill a focus for burial. Two Bronze Age round barrows were situated at the north and south of the hill, hilltop and they were excavated in 1823. The nearest barrow was situated to the north of you, just to the right of the radio station buildings. Little remains of the mounds above ground now, but they exist as archaeological features below the ground surface. Now, this here, this is something called LiDAR, and so um, it's really, really useful. They, what they do is they shine a light down at the ground, they shine another one here. This is a, a tool that archaeologists use nowadays. And what I will do is I will um, I'll put in the description um, a link to Mola's uh, work, Mola and Clasp's work in here. Because for me, it's been invaluable just doing the, uh, the um, what do you call it, the, <laughs> sorry, he's talking about trains, uh, for doing the research on, 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 this, on this site. And um, it's, they don't dig up here anymore, um, which is a pity uh, because there are, like I say, Roman burials up here. Just walking through this bracken here. Uh, I hope you, look, you, you appreciate the fact that I look like a farmer today. I don't normally look like a farmer. I actually wear this hat when I go twain spotting, when I'm taking the mickey out of him and we go to the railway station. Um, and I wear some silly glasses with it as well for a train spot. But uh, the reason I'm stomping through this bracken here is to show you these. Look at the size of these. Absolutely massive, great big things. And these, I don't, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that they must be something to do with the, um, the old radio masts. Just to give you an indication of the size. You see his purple comes walking around this one here. Where is he? There he is, there you go. That gives you an indication of how big they are. And you can imagine that, you know, in a thousand years, when, um, when um, the archeologists of the day if there are archaeologists then <laughs> um, come they'll, they'll, be, they'll probably go oh that was a ritual because that's what all archaeologists say it was a ritual site ritual in, it was of um, religious importance or something but yeah they're really amazing things there's some more further off in the distance but we're going to go over here now to what is pretty much a sacred site the one thing i am noticing is that there seem to be notice boards around um, which must be quite new because they weren't here last time i came up about six months ago so we are presently standing within the large Iron Age hill fort. Behind you, the banks and ditches of the fortifications lie under what is now the tree line. And you can actually see, if you just look down there where purple is, you can see the bank just continues here and it does continue over this way as well. But what you will notice here and what it does say on this board is that they believe, having done the uh, geophysical surveys, that this was an entrance into the hill fort. And then over here, up in this area, there was a, um, a settlement, uh, sort of late Iron Age, early Roman uh, settlement. And so th this is the, um, what they've picked up on the, the geophysical surveys. Um, and you can see this is it sort of put into context. It's diff difficult to read, but like I say, if you go onto the MOLA website, there's a great PDF there that you can download. And this, again, it tells you all about the geophysical uh, survey that was taken place. And this is the machinery that they used. It's a very Heath Robinson affair, but it does work. So this is the sort of, this is picked up by using uh, magnetometry and resistivity that picks up these uh, anomalies underneath the ground. And um, you can see here, evidence of an old roundhouse and then in the middle there is the hearth um, and if you go down to Stanick Lakes I do believe that they've got reimagined one of these down there this is the roundhouse that the um, the Iron Age and the early Roman people would have lived in so yeah um, if you want to pause the video I'll go over this slowly and you can you can read it but I'm not going to read it all out like I say these boards are new because 
West Northamptonshire Council has only been in, in, in existence for about a year and a half now. Um, and they, you can see that they've only freshly been concreted in. So, yeah, these weren't here before. So this is, it's good that they're doing that uh, because, like I say, I've been up here. Oh, bear with me. Fingers are so cold. I can't get my camera to move. Um, it is very, very cold today as well. Um, but um, when I've been up here before, we'll carry on walking while, whilst I'm talking. Um, is it going to turn? And you can still see some of these concrete blocks here that are part, part so of the... Um, different styles. Oh, there's so, there's so many different kinds of aerials. That's the thing. Um, and you can see, I mean, that one looks like it might have just been a weight or something, doesn't it? But it's strange. But again, you've got the ones that we were just over on the horizon over there. And then round here, you can just see the tops of some here. But what we're going to do is we're going to walk through this woodland here, which actually follows the line of the actual um, the earthworks. And then you can see down here as well, another one of those blocks. And we are going to find something that was very, very important for the people that lived up here back in the day. If you live on top of the hill, what do you need? One of the things that you need is water. And um, obviously being on top of the hill, it's not a readily accessible thing. But just down here, uh, in a couple of hundred metres, is a, a essentially a holy well. You can imagine the people that lived up here, just cracking on with their lives and things like that. They would have um, needed water. And then just down here, just bubbling out of the side of the hill, is the holy well. So next time you see me, I'll be right next to it and we'll have a look at it together. So we're still walking up to the, um, to the, to the well, to the spring. But another thing... Um, and I, you'll have to correct me, correct me if, you, if you know the, the actual story. But um, on the evening before the battle for Northampton, um, it was either the Royalists or the Roundheads, one or the other, actually camped up on here. And that's another reason that it, it used to... I mean, the thing is, the, the names for these places have only been sort of codified in the last couple of hundred years since maps started being drawn and written. You know, the people on this side of the, the hill might have called it Camp Hill, and the people on that side of the hill might have called it Borough Hill. And even that in itself, they're just taking a bit of a tangent there. Why would it be called Borough Hill? Now, if it was in Wellingborough, you could understand that. I actually think what it is, is because, the, because of the burial mounds that were up here, which we know as barrows, I actually think that it's a, a sort of a change of the word over time. People would have said Barra Hill, Barra Hill, and it's now become Borough Hill because it doesn't match with Daventry in any way, shape or form. Um, you've got the Dane tree, which is where apparently the Daventry comes from. And I think that's actually up on this hill as well. A lot of the time when, um, when the Normans turned up in the, in the 11th century and into the 12th century, well, they turned up in the 11th century, but, um, and they, um, they, they were calling things after the people that were here before them. So the, the people that they, the Vikings, as they would have called them, were the Danes, which is why up at the Northampton Hill Fort, that's called Danes Camp. Uh, because the Normans, who named it, or whose name we still use now, uh, called it after the Vikings. But anyway, we're, where, we're, we're right here at the spring now. So this is the Holy Well. It does have a, a proper name. And I can't think of it just at the moment, but I will put it in the... Um, and so this is... You see how muddy it is down here? This would be sacred ground. It is, yeah. Even the tree next to it highlighted. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. So we're look. You can still you can see we're still on the side of this hill here. So we're halfway up a hill, and so this is this is what kept this place alive. This it doesn't look very appetising now. There's cows up here now, and you can see this has got cow poo and everything there. But this is I don't don't know exactly where it springs from, but this is the holy well. This is essentially what makes this place um, livable, isn't it? When you think about it. Um, Without water up here, you, you, you're stuffed, really. So, you know, that's why the Bronze Age people were here, as, as well as the elevation. But, you know, that's why the Stone Age people were up here. That's why the Bronze Age people, the Iron Age people, the Roman people. Uh, you know, we've got evidence that there were Vikings up here. You'll have to have a look at that thing that I'm putting down in the description from Mola, because they've shown all the finds up here. I'm pretty sure they've found Saxon knives up here, um, Norman, so Viking stuff as well. And without this water they'd be absolutely stuffed. And you can actually see it just beginning to run down the hill here. You have to be very, very careful because it is very, very muddy. I've got my wellies on, so we can actually go through it. But you can actually see how clean the water actually does run through here. So somewhere underneath here, it's difficult to see. And I suppose in the middle of summer, it would be easier to find out. But this is, this is the spring. Yeah, so that's it, isn't it? And it's beautiful as well. Beautiful and quiet when I shut up. Gorgeous, isn't it? Anyway, we're now moving forwards 
and we're going to move right up to date really well i say right up to date relatively we're going to move right up to um second world war technology if we turn the camera around just over there in the distance you might see these buildings coming into can you see those you might just see those and that like i say is second world war technology and um so we'll go over there and the good thing is now like i said they've got these information boards we were talking to this the, these dog walkers a second ago who come up here every day to walk their dogs and apparently these these boards were put up um just a couple of weeks ago so it's fantastic and you should come up and see these places that's you know that's one thing i always say is, is get out and come and look at them i know not everybody's able to and that's why people like me and purple love to come out and do videos for you but if you are able you can park just over there it's a beautiful walk it takes you a couple of hours to get all the way around it if you just you know if you well, probably not even that you probably do it in about an hour and you can get up here and you can enjoy it and you just listen to it now absolutely stunning um you might be able to hear off in the background the sound of the road and that's the m1 and the m1's probably about five or six miles from here and then between us and the m1 you've got the train line which is what is it purple nose is trains west coast main line. so it's the west coast main line and then just just a little bit closer again you've got the a5 which is the old roman watling street and then you've got us up on here so it's right in the center of um the sort of communications for the whole of the center of england and obviously from that further afield um but yeah we're coming up to these buildings now and as you can see there is a notice board i'm going to get to this one first and um so this is really really interesting so this brings us right back up in bang up to date with um relatively relatively bang up to date but 100 years ago which is which is nothing when you consider that you know evidence of human um, occupation up here has been around for six thousand years the small derelict brick buildings you see in front of you may not seem like much but they actually hold huge importance in 20th century history these two buildings and their transmission masts and it shows them all this is what they look like from the air we could actually get the drone up and show you now but um you might as well just look at that one and their two transmission masts were responsible for the successful navigation of bombers across Britain and Europe during the Second World War as they housed the master station for the eastern chain of GEE. This was a new radio navigational system introduced in March 1942 and it became a significant part of the war effort. effort. To the southeast of where you are standing, hidden amongst the trees, is a small natural spring. The presence of fresh water on the hilltop would have been vital to Borough Hill's effectiveness as a defended settlement throughout history. References to the Spellwell or Spellowell go back to at least the early medieval period where it was an important meeting place. Spello may come from the word spell for speech and low, a hill with barrows. And so again, that, that, that kind of says to me about Borough Hill. You know, we call it Borough Hill, but it was a hill with barrows, so Barrow Hill. Anyway, and so you can see the, 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 the spring that we've just looked at there and you can see there some drone photography of the two um of the two buildings now purple's just gone in that one so radar this is really important the hill had been involved in radio detection and ranging better known as radar from its very early days on the morning of the 26th of february 1935 a handley page hayford bomber was flown through the beam of the shortwave bbc daventry transmitter at borough hill in order to test where the radio waves reflected from a plane could be used to track enemy aircraft such was the secrecy of this test that only three people were present observing from two receivers antennas located about six miles south of Daventry monitoring the reflected radio waves the experiment was a success and was considered to be the birth of radar an advanced warning system that was crucial during the Battle of Britain so there you go there's another part of the history of, um, of Borough Hill that is like I say almost bang up to date really isn't it so these buildings here were used as part of the radio system that was used uh, what did it say GEE -E. I don't know what that means but um, you know used for um, you know protecting Britain uh, and directing the planes during the Battle of Britain let's go and have a look inside them but these look like almost like a blast blast entrance you can see the walls falling at this point but what you do see in these buildings like this is that they have this this sort of double double entrance so if there is a bomb drops here 
the blast won't go into into the building if there was a door there it'd just go straight through the building whether that's right or not i don't know i might just be i might just be guessing there well i am just guessing there but yeah this is it yeah very little remains look i'd assume it would have had a roof on it but that might just be a guess you can see again down here one of those big you can see big concrete slab there and another big concrete slab there so whether this actually held a transmitter or a receiver on it i don't know but yeah really really interesting stuff you know and this is what i say about the hill it's it's you know its history is it's about power it's about um you know projecting power this this is very much part of it isn't it you know having a technological system that gives you an advantage over the um over your enemy as it was during the second world war the germans and the nazi powers and and whatever um gives us a, gave, gave the british and the americans and the the allied forces power didn't it and so it you know for all the way back into the stone age this hill has projected power and these buildings continue to project it and, and the aerial that still sits up there is still projecting it now because the bbc you know are still concerned with soft power and about spreading information whether it's true or not um i don't think it is personally but um not, not a lot of it but um um to the world you know keeping people informed as they would call it about the goings on in the world so anyway we're going to continue on because there's a golf course just here and if we can get a chance i'll show you some of the the multi valate parts of the hill fort so yeah that's one of the buildings or two of the little buildings but then there's this other bigger building here it's got what i think are these bomb these blast doors you see the way it's sort of hidden behind the wall there and there so that if there is a blast it can't go through the wall and it can't get round a corner but you can see they're pretty well bricked up now well very well bricked up just cannot get in there at all all the way to the ceiling interesting they've got a concrete reinforced concrete up there which obviously would have absorbed some blasts if that was the if the was the intent and now we're actually onto a golf course as well, but I'm going to talk about that in, in, a, in a minute. Just have another quick look around this corner here. It looks like they, they use it for storage or something. So obviously there is a space inside there. I'm having a look in. Oh, I can see something like, it's probably like the lawnmower for the golf course, isn't it? But yeah. Hello? Hello? Yeah, so there you go. So that is part of the buildings that they use for the defence of Europe. Very, very interesting. We're on to the second part now of the hill fort. So we're going all the way from, you know, 20th century, all the way back into sort of the first, first millennium BC. And this is actually another hill fort. Very, very unusual to find two hill forts. So the whole of this hill, the whole thing, all the way down to where we've come from and all the way down here, was a hill fort. And then what they've done is they've actually consolidated their space into a much smaller place on this hill here. Now, unfortunately, it is a golf course and it is being used today. Uh, but what I will do, once we get back over that side where it's public land, I'll send the drone up and hopefully you'll see the, um, the other, the other multi-valet and it really shows up a lot better over there. So we're being a little bit naughty here actually walking across the fairway because it's very cold i can't imagine there's that many golfists out but i do really want to show you well you know if they're out these are the yeah exactly if you hear if you hear oh and then i fall <laughs> over we'll blame the golfists but yeah the reason i wanted to come across this way is to show you these amazing earthworks look at that off in the distance wow. and i don't know whether you can see it in the distance right on the horizon there the white is coventry that is the, this, the city of Coventry, up right in the distance. So it really shows you how far you can see. You can see behind me, you can see all the way to, to um, Bedfordshire. Here, you can see all the way to Coventry. You can see rugby from here. You can see all the way up towards Leicestershire. Absolutely amazing space. It's worth getting cold, James. Yeah, it is, isn't it? So I don't know if you can see it right on the very, very horizon. If I slow down a bit, oh, there are some golfists here. So, yes, uh, so, sorry, we just sort of come back on there. Sorry, 
but just in the distance over here, I don't know if you can see on the on the horizon there that piece, that smoke that's coming up. That is actually off the cement works at, um, at uh, Rugby. Um, but yeah, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually walking down, and you can see how how much of a of a ditch this is. And down here, this, so this was the second hill fort. This was later on. Um, and so this was cons essentially consolidating the base of the, of the people that lived here. And you can really get a, a, an understanding of the multivalate nature. So more than one ditch in a second, you'll see it, it drops again as we go over here. We're not really supposed to be on the golf course, but for the sake of history, I yeah, think. In the name of history, James. You can, so you can see there, it drops. Then we get another. Now, obviously, it's been flattened out a little bit for the, yeah. for the golf course, but you can see over here. So I'll flip this round if I can and my fingers don't freeze to death. It flips, yeah. And you can see here, it drops off again. I mean, golf courses are beautiful places and to be perfectly honest, it's not a bad way of keeping stewardship with the land, I don't, I don't think. You know, there's worse things that could happen. You could get developers building on here, couldn't you? So, um, but you can see they're actually utilising some of the some of the um, bumps in the ground as part of their as part of their um, their, their golf course. That's, that's obviously a green there, so we've got to be a little bit careful because <laughs> there, there are actually quite a few golfists out. Um, so we've got to be a little bit careful. We might get chased off, but uh, we're going to walk, continue walking down here because I think we've lost the footpath. So we're going to walk back to the footpath. Um, and so there you go look at that look at this you see but yeah no it's and you can see look at all these earthworks here look at all of this isn't it amazing yeah i think we i think i think we have lost the footpath i don't know i don't know what, <laughs> that's what that's our excuse when they stop us anyway Where's the, where's the footpath then? I think there's a gate down in the bottom. Oh, right, OK. We've managed to completely go the wrong way by mistake all of a sudden. I think we need to be over there. We do, mate. Yeah, we do. But we stick behind me. Yeah, no, exactly. There, there's right? another load of people coming through. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We're sort of lost. Is the footpath here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, Thank we're, you. We, we want to stay behind you, mate. I don't fancy getting knocked out this morning. We'll just walk along this side here and thank you very much. Thank you, <laughs> there you go. So yeah, you can see, I mean, what a beautiful use of the land, though, but you can see the lay of the land here as well. And so um, it's good that it's still being used, I think. You can really see the lay of the land up here. And um, so this was the other hill fort. Obviously the hill fort was at the top here. They have utilized, they've obviously moved some of the soil down here. But once we get find the footpath, which is I think is just here, we can head up to um, back onto the the, the the main hill fort up at the top there. But yeah, so this is a secondary hill fort. Don't know what, exactly when it was built, but it was definitely later. The the archaeological reports have said that it's a, a it's a later development. Right, so we're back on the footpath now after we got unfortunately got lost, um, <laughs> and. Um, you can see this is a heck of a hill here up to the hill fort and so i don't know if you can see that chap moving around up there but it gives you an idea of how much higher up the hill is than we are oh does that mean someone's oh there's somebody playing up here he doesn't like us does he he's crossed his arms and everything <laughs> but yeah so this is the we're walking in between this is holloway this is what's called a hollow way over the years this has just been worn out by cattle people things like that morning hello how are you it's all right mate i'll pay my taxes <laughs> yep yeah but you don't pay your green fleas <laughs> so here we go and this is i think this is where the it, it is, I know it is, 100%. Oh yes, it. Yeah, 100%, mate. There we go. Yeah. And so you can see the remains of the ditches and the banks here. Absolutely amazing place. I love it, James, thank you. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. And these guys obviously knocking balls about. 
It's a bit cold for it today, isn't it? Yeah, perfect. Oh, he's coming across. Okay. So this is what people are doing up here nowadays. Look. I think it went somewhere in that direction. Oh, bloody hell, it ate somebody else. <laughs> right, can we go? Yeah. Cheers, thank you. Thank you very much, cheers. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna disappear off quickly before the second chap takes a, a wallop of the ball. This <laughs> it did sound like it hit somebody, didn't it? So that's really interesting. <laughs> they, these guys that we've just been talking to here are actually playing over the tops of the embankments here. This is amazing. So the, these, these, the hill force itself, the, 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 the ditches and the, and the banks are actually used as part of the golf course. And you can see here, much clearer, there you go. So there's the, you can see where purple is down here. And I'm on top of the, the bank. And then this is the multivalate part of it, because down here, you can see there's another ditch and then another bank. And then even further off into the distance, if we go down here, you can see another one just off there in the background. Now it's all been sort of ploughed out, agricultural use has seen it, has seen it sort of reduced away. But you can see, so there was one, two, three of the, uh, of the banks and obviously a ditch in between each one. So yeah, we're gonna head back onto the main part of the hill fort there because there are some, um, what do you call it? Some uh, more information boards. So we're just about another information board. See, this is an interesting thing as well here. You probably can't see it, it won't show up on the camera, but there is probably leads down to the, the, the ancient trackway, but it certainly goes right across the whole of the hill fort. And it, to give you an indication of how big it is, look at the aerial in the background and the buildings. And um, we're about three quarters of the way along it. So it really is a massive, massive place. Just out here in the middle, between us and the building over there, there are Roman burials. And they know that they've done the um, geophysical work. The archaeologists have come up here and done the geophysical work. I believe that three of them were um, excavated sometime in the 19th century, probably around 1823. There was a lot of work done by, uh, I can't remember the name of the person, but if I do, I'll find it and I'll put it in, in the, you'll see it in a second, I'm sure. And, um, but yeah, you look at this hill now. It's, um, it's an amazing place. And like I say, you can see all the way around. So just behind that row of trees over there is, um, is the Northampton Lighthouse. You've got the M1 down there, the A5, the Great Western Railway. Round here, you've got Rugby, Coventry. Then over this way, obviously the hill rises a little bit more here. Um, you've, got, um, you've got Oxfordshire and down into Warwickshire. So it's an absolute, what an amazing place. Okay, ahead of you lies the smaller Iron Age hill fort. So this is it here, you can see on the edge of the hill. So if you look at the, the hill fort itself, this is the old hill, the old whole hill fort area here. And then this little edge here is the secondary hill fort. You can see it better there. And they've got some sort of topographical information on there. Um, and it's uh, now occupied by the Daventry and District Golf Course. It's not open to the public. Uh, what I'll do is I'll get the drone up and you should be able to see something like this but there'll be nice moving pictures hopefully and you've got the um, the reservoir in the background here this is Daventry Country Park and off out into the distance Coventry and Rugby over this way the layout and features of this smaller hill fort conforms well with other known examples of later Iron Age developed hill forts the earthworks of this later hill fort visible to your left across the golf course are much greater in size despite enclosing a much smaller area the main southern entrance is also much more elaborate than those of the larger hill fort other entrances have been identified on the eastern and western sides of this smaller hill fort, though it is considered likely that these may represent later activity cutting through the original ditches. So when we walked in, if you look on this drawing here, that is the radar building or the building that housed the uh, GEE equipment. And we actually went across here when we walked across it. Um, and, and you see these, these striations in the ground here, very 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 much developed you'll see that on the drone footage and so you can see when they're talking about the southern entrance that's this bit here and then they've got an eastern entrance and a western entrance there and um, and then it just disappears often to a point so yeah really really quite interesting 
Looking back to the south across the main hilltop, 18th century antiquarians recorded a row of at least 18 earthen mounds passing down the spine of the hill. This was almost certainly a linear barrow cemetery, although agricultural activity in the past 300 years has removed any surviving mounds and nothing of these still remains on the surface today. Archaeological Geophysical Survey has identified a series of circular features which are likely to be the last remains of these features. Conventionally, these barrows have been described as Roman, but finds of Anglo-Saxon date, including spears and pottery and two axe heads recovered from the hilltop during George Baker's excavation that's the name I was looking for a minute ago, George Baker. He was the antiquarian who, who did the, um, the digging in um, 1823, I believe. Uh, might indicate that some of the barrows have, may have been of later date or possibly reused during later periods. And so there you see some of the finds that have actually been found. You've got spearheads here, you've got axe heads there, belt buckles, something like that beads and obviously pots for cooking in. Within the defences of the smaller hill fort, a high status building complex, possibly a villa, was constructed during the Roman period. The remains of the villa were the subject of two excavations in the 19th century, which revealed walls of milestone with floors paved in local blue rag stone or coloured mosaic tesserae. The roof was tiled, the windows were glazed and the walls were decorated with frescoes of painted wall plaster. At least one room had a hypercourse. Now a hypercost is a really interesting thing, so a hypercost is essentially, I don't know if you can see on this picture here, I'll get a picture off the internet, but a hypercost is a way, a way of having heated floors, which we would nowadays think of um, as quite modern technology, but what they would have is they'd have a fire at this point here, and the heat would actually go underneath the floor, so they'd build these little, what they call pile, little piles of stone, and then they'd lay the floors, floor slabs on top of it, and their floors would be heated, so this was very, very much a high status building if it had that kind of technology. Uh, possibly indicating a bathhouse. A mosaic floor of red, black and cream tiles in a geometric pattern was discovered on the site and a fragment of it is on display at Daventry Museum. If we get time, we'll see if we can find out whether we can go and have a quick look at that. But there, I mean, it's almost like a QR code, that isn't it? So yeah, so that, and it, what I've only just noticed with these signs, it does actually show the contour of the hill. It's very interesting. So um, yeah, there you go. And I, I, I'm actually really quite pleased that they've they've decided to put these um, these um, these notice boards up here. We've just been speaking to a chap called Dan, and hopefully Dan, good to meet you today. Um, but, um, and he was he, he, he's talking about ancient civilizations and things. There might be some kind of ancient civilization buried underneath, and he might be right. You know, if if you if you know any of the work of Graham Hancock and stuff like that, he's got some interesting stories and interesting theories. I'm not saying I believe in them or disbelieve them, but it's interesting stuff. So what we're going to do now is we're going to walk back to the car, which takes us back, back past the big mast. Uh, but we're walking now across the area where, along the spine of this hill here, were the 18 barrows, of which three have been excavated. Now, I've always thought that they were Roman, but according to that board there, it does actually say that they may be later. And um, where Purple is actually walking, would appear to be a slightly raised trackway. You know, I don't know if you can see it too well, but it does look like it's it's slightly raised. So, and that walks away. yeah, there you go. Yeah, check out my other channel as well if you just want a bit of, uh, you know, nice scenery and that kind of thing, um, doing some music. The man that walks away. And if you want to find the music channel itself, look for uh, Jamie Brady, aka Mood Shaper. Uh, and obviously check out this man's um, wonderful channels, Purple Vision and Purple's Railway Adventures, and where he does a lot with railways, obviously, and um, a lot with what we're doing here. So this is interesting now. You do begin to see slight bumps in the ground. Um, obviously there's a tree line here, um, but you can see that that actually does rise up a little bit. And they do keep cattle up here as well. Um, we've been sort of stamping through cow muck all morning. But like I say, we've got the relly, wellies on. So I'm not sure whether these might be what remains of the burial mounds. Obviously it says on the board back there that the, um, the burial mounds are all gone and they've been ploughed under because there was, there was farming or there has been farming up here probably since the dawn of time. You know, it's a great place to farm. You, you know, you get the sunshine, there's no trees blocking the, you know, you can grow your crops and this, that and the other. But um, it's a bit of a pity that it's gone. But by the same token, we know it's still under the ground. So the, the archaeology is kind of protected. I think, it's, I think it is protected by, you know, order, 
so that they're not going to be building houses up here for the foreseeable future. But you know, as long, if the right brown envelopes go in the right pockets, I'm sure that'll change. But um, yeah, so this is Daventry Hillfort. I'll do the outro when we get to the end and just sort of conclude everything that we've, we've talked about. But yeah, please do get yourself up here. It's a beautiful place. Lovely just to come for a walk. We've been speaking to loads of people and they're all interested in what we're doing because obviously you, it's not often you see people walking around with cameras in front of their face, I suppose. But obviously then we can share some information that we've got, but also some of the stuff that they know, you know, sort of well, local learned, knowledge I've from the people. so much today. Yeah, um, exactly. When my viewers see the video, they'll be learning what you've shown me here today. As exactly, well, so. exactly. Thank you, Jamie. It's all right, mate. So yeah, we're going to continue just walking back towards the, towards the aerial now and um, then get back to the car and then we'll, we'll do a bit of a wrap up. Thank you very much for watching. I'm back here at the, um, I've come around another way now, but we're back here at the aerial here and um, that's pretty much it. You, you really should come up here and have a look. It makes it so much better now. They've got the, the information boards around the place because you can kind of get a feel for it yourself as well. And um, so yeah, come up to Daventry Borough Hill. It's the, the car parking, you just come up the hill, you park your car and that's it. There's no, it's free to do so. The, the pathways are reasonably accessible if you you know if you struggle with mobility you can get a little bit of the way around if you're in a wheel you know if you're in you know on wheels you're going to struggle to be perfectly honest but uh, it's still nice to come up here and just sit in the car park to be honest um so that's pretty much it thank you very much for watching uh keep your eye on the purple's channels purple vision and purple railway adventures also take a look out for my other channels which obviously everything's going to be linked down in the description uh the man that walks away and jamie brady aka the mood shaper but that's pretty much all for now thank you very much purple thank you for bringing me mate and uh we're going to go and find a uh, we believe some kind of hidden entrance into a um into badby hill which is just over there so you might see a video for that very very soon see you again soon bye bye